December 14, 1967. Four MiG-17s have ambushed an F-8 Crusader piloted by Richard Shafford. The 10-minute dogfight that is about to unfold will push Shafford to the limits of human endurance. Four bandits are in the air. The situation is quickly unraveling. The A-4 he was escorting has fled. And now Shafford faces four to one odds. He must play to his aircraft's strength. And I just stood the Crusader on his tail and did what it does best, and that is just climb. Climb like hell. And I went over the top at about 25,000 feet and turned upside down to see what was down there. The first pair of MiGs are here in a descending left turn, trying to regain airspeed. The second pair are here, trying to climb to Shafford's altitude. In his first move, he'll dive past the ascending MiGs, then attack the other pair, who are vulnerable targets given their low airspeed. Outnumbered but unafraid, Dick Shafford noses down. The Crusader screams past the ascending MiGs at 450 knots. At 10,000 feet, he begins to pull out. The heavy G of the dive rips away his oxygen mask and microphone. He can no longer radio for help. He barrel rolls to the outside and then descends. In doing this, he gets in missile position without losing airspeed. Shafford gets good tone on the sidewinder and fires. But he never gets the chance to see if the missile hits its target. At that very instant, a stream of tracers snap over his canopy. The second pair of MiGs have now reversed their climb. Once again, they're diving on him from 8 o'clock high. The tables have turned. Instantly, Schaffer improvises a unique maneuver. He pitches the Crusader down, then rudders left, cutting under the MiG's turn. From the MiG's point of view, it's as if Schaffer simply disappears as he dives and cuts under them. And as quickly as the MiG-21s arrive, they depart. It's a guerrilla tactic often employed by MiG-21s in Vietnam. MiG-21s are a rare commodity for the North Vietnamese, and they're used sparingly. In 1967, there are only 16 in their air force. Using their speed, they streak into the area, fire all their missiles, hoping to score a lucky kill, and streak out, avoiding any dogfights with American aircraft. For Dick Shafford, exhaustion from the physical strain from several minutes of high G combat is starting to take its toll. But Shafford has sunk his teeth into the MiGs, and he's not letting go. The fight goes on. He shifts his attention to the MiG-17s, 10,000 feet below. They were coming around underneath the position that I was, and this was my chance to make gunfighter mean something. The MiG-17s are here. Shafford is above them. He can bank left and begin a dive on them. He'll gain tremendous energy in the dive, ensuring that he doesn't get locked in a low-speed turning fight. The MiG-17's strength. Shafford noses down and dives on the MiG element. They bank left, hoping to force an overshoot. Shafford must break up the MiG element. First, he will execute a barrel roll to the outside. Then, as he descends, he'll fire on the wingman. But instead of watching the missile to the target, he'll roll again, positioning himself on the MiG leader's tail. Shafford rolls. then fires his last missile on the wingman. He rolls again. As he descends, he switches to guns. 
the wild maneuver works. The wingman is now out of the fight, and Mig Leader is in Shaffert's gun sight. Already in a high G turn, Shaffert tracks the Mig. He closes on him, 2,000 feet. He tightens his turn even more, leading the target. I press the trigger and boom, boom. Seven rounds out of each gun, and the link broke. The pull of G is so massive it has jammed all four of his cannons. The last gunfighter is now out of guns and missiles. A new mission emerges from the adrenaline rush of combat. Survival. Shaffert may not be able to kill his opponent, but he can instill a healthy dose of fear. With violent maneuvering, he'll try to intimidate the MiG into a tactical mistake, and then beat a hasty retreat. He's now on the MiG-6 in a tight left turn. Shaffert breaks out of the turn. The MiG pilot seizes the opportunity and, for a fleeting moment, fires on him, but the tracers miss. Shaffert goes vertical. MiG leader climbs after him. The MiG-17 and F-8 claw for altitude. Shaffert runs out of airspeed at the top of his climb and noses over. The MiG does the same. At the bottom of the dive, they cross paths and climb again. As each pilot jockeys for position, they find themselves locked in a complex aerial maneuver, a vertical rolling scissors. Pilots describe it as a self-generating furball. In the vertical rolling scissors, each pilot rolls around the other while climbing and diving. In the climb, they lose airspeed and the slower aircraft inches closer to his enemy's six o'clock firing position. I think we were thinking with the exact same mindset. Reverse it back around and get your nose behind the other guy. This is going to get slow real quick as you're going up like this. And if you get your nose just a skosh behind the other guy, you're going to shoot him out of the sky real quick. They twist around each other over and over. Both pilots fly at the knife edge of endurance. This grueling fight has been going on for nearly 10 minutes an eternity in the world of dogfighting. Well, I can almost sense his nose coming a little farther into me each time as he came around. And about the fifth or sixth time down this, uh, on the downside of this uh, vertical rolling scissors, I could see the next time up is going to be enough inside that his guns will probably cover me and he will be able to fire. Shaffert must make a move, now. They hit bottom on another scissors, and Shaffert abruptly rolls out. The MiG pilot is taken off guard, and Shaffert uses every bit of his 16,000 pounds of thrust, accelerating away from the MiG at treetop level. As I look back over my shoulder now, this guy had finished his turnaround, was coming at me and then all of a sudden he pulled up like this and I could see the plan view of his airplane and he was back about a mile ahead. So he was calling it quits too. Dick Shaffert's dogfight is a nearly flawless example of skillful maneuvering and maximizing the capabilities of an aircraft. Its every move is studied by fighter pilots today. It's really ironic to me that arguably the most noteworthy dogfight of the Vietnam War did not result in anybody getting shot down. But considering that he was able to uh, fly home and land back aboard the Oriskany that evening was a victory in itself. North Vietnamese pilots had tangled with a rare breed of fighter pilot. They probably had a bottle of cold beer and said, we just met the biggest maniac in the United States Navy because Shaffert just was a wild man. He just, he never gave him a chance. Even when he was out of weapons, he was still at him. 